So most of the other videos covered the hands-on things that we knew we need to do when we come out and do one of these inspections. This video covers just mainly what you want to look for when you first arrive. Just some things to to cover and maybe mention to the customer or mention in your report that might help uh, keep things working well in the future. Please like and subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching. All right, so here's the septic tank of this system and we just showed up today to do the Advantex maintenance. What we want to look for is really uh, signs of growth around the lids, make sure the lids are are dug out and are accessible. We also look to make sure that the lid bolts are all in place and the lids are securely fastened. It can be obviously dangerous if uh, you've got some lids that aren't bolted down. We're going to go down to the Advantex, take a look at that. This looks pretty good, although this far side lid on this one today looks like a little bit sunk down in the grass. It could be dug out, um, but not super bad. It's not as bad as some of the ones I've seen necessarily. So here we're at the Advantex unit, and we've got a uh, pretty good setting on this edge. This is the open edge. Looks like all the bolts are in place, and the lids look good here. Uh, this has got a secondary vent on this side because we had bending issues before. The critical part though is that we want to see this backside edge. We want to make sure it's cleaned out and dug out because what can happen here if you don't have about four inches of drop to the native soil, when you open this lid it can actually jam up in, into the ground, into the soil, or the backfill around the Advantex pod and cause the the uh, hinges on the Advantex pod to break off and that can be a pretty costly fix because you got to get new attachment hardware re-epoxy that on there. Um, looks like the vent's intact. One thing to look for on the vent itself is I want to make sure it's fairly straight. This one's tipping a little bit but it's so close to the pod itself I don't think there's a, a belly in that piping underground. If there is sometimes that belly can lead to a air blockage issue which could cause the system not to function correctly because this is where the air actually comes in. Then we take a look at the Vericom panel. This particular site has another panel for a drip system. Um, but what we want to look for in here is signs that possible septic gases are coming up here and corroding the panel. That's something that we'd want to eventually correct. If there's a seal off or some kind of duct seal between the panel and the system in the conduit, that'll avoid that. This one looks pretty good. I actually pulled out the operation and maintenance or the wiring instructions, um, but it's good to make sure those are intact and in there. Um, otherwise, we've got lights on on the board, power's on, so everything looks like it's functioning, at least initially here. So here's a perfect example of a system that's got quite a bit of foliage around the lids, needs to be trimmed out. Um, we just popped the the lid on this system as well and when we opened it the actual spring assists were broken off the the pod we had to put those back on but you can see that the hinges are broke off on the back and part of the reason why is because that was backfilled too high up onto the pod and when the when the lids opened it pops those hinges off so we got it open um, the other thing you can see here with the grass is that grass can get into the gasket of the Advantex pot itself and in some cases we've gotten through that conduit or through the grass in the gasket we've gotten worms into the treatment unit so we like to make sure we keep the grasses and stuff kind of away from the edge so they don't grow into the unit and then worms don't follow those in and cause a worm infestation in the treatment unit itself so something else to look for. So actually on this system and this is the same one we had the problem with the lid. You can see in between the sheets those worm castings. So this might have some worm issue. And that's pretty evident with that area kind of between those two shields. You can see down in the media that there's some black looking dirt stuff that can be deposited in there by the worms and can accumulate in the sheets. It usually isn't a major issue and we don't worry too much about it. A lot of times we'll spray that down when we're out here just to kind of beat it back a little bit but it can accumulate and sometimes you can add like a pesticide to kill those worms over the top of the media so if you find one of those that's really bad then you know consult the factory or 
RC Worsting Company and we'll get you some direction on what to do there. So Cass got the Inlet Sanitary T riser section open. This one's a Mode 3 system, so the Recirc return filtrate drops into the septic tank area for denitrification. Um, this one isn't a nitrogen system, so I think it just ended up coming that way. But uh, ultimately what you want to look for in here is just a large accumulation of plastics and stuff that really isn't supposed to be flushed down the toilet. You can also look for stuff in the scum layer that would be, you know, some indication of something going on in the home that's not appropriate to the system. This looks pretty good. It's got a mature scum layer. There's a bunch of pine needles and stuff down there, but that's not going to hurt anything. Uh, so we're going to continue on. So even though we're not required to sample, Cass actually is pulling a sample from this one out of the splitter valve, which we've shown in a previous video. But what he'll do with the sample is just run it through the turbidity test. Um, if you don't have a turbidity meter, you can do an eyeball test and kind of see how clear the liquid looks. This one, when we opened it, smelled like it should. It kind of had a musty smell when it dosed, so my guess is it's probably pretty good. So this is the Orenco fiberglass lid. We got it off the tank and we're just taking a look at it. It can actually show signs if people have ran over with a lawnmower or whatever the case is. Um, show signs of cracking here at the at the bolts. So that can be a problem. This one looks really good. It's a pretty old lid, but you know all the edges look fine. The lid doesn't show any signs of wear and tear, so it's in good shape, doesn't need to be replaced. But if it's all cracked and looks like it is uh, kind of spongy in the middle, if you step on it on the tank, it feels spongy to your feet, probably want to replace the lid. So here's a sample that Cass pulled. If you can take the sample and run it through the turbidimeter and get an NTU reading on it, um, NTUs typically correlate to BOD, a BOD or TSS measurement. Any NTU over, if I remember correctly, it was like 15 to 20, um, would probably pass BOD TSS. Any, I'm sorry, any NTU below 15 or 20 would probably pass BOD TSS. Any NTU above that might, might not pass, so you want to look at it. But, of course, if you've got a sample and it's this full, you can look straight down into the bottle. Typically, if you can see the bottom of the bottle, you're going to pass BOD TSS as well. So pretty easy eyeball test to do it that way.